All right, uh, I'm just going to get started. We have 50 minutes this year, so I'm going to get started just in case I screw something up and go long. A uh, little bit of housekeeping. There's a party tonight. Actually, there's two parties, and then out there. Uh, so everyone should go to that party, because that one's going to be way more fun. Unless you have a presentation tomorrow or incredibly good self-control, uh, then go to the party. There are feedback forms. There are ones about the conference, and there are ones about me. Please be nice to the SQL bits people. You can be very mean to me. That saves me a lot of money on dominatrixes, which I can put in my kids' college funds, and that makes me feel way better. Uh, the people in orange shirts are our friends. Yeah, they're nice people. They volunteer their time. And this year, we can give them a round of applause without causing a catastrophe. So let's say thank you to our friends in orange. Anyway, uh, I'm Eric. I became an independent consultant in January. Merry Christmas. Uh, before that, I worked for some guy you have never heard of, and I had some other boring DBA jobs. Since last year, I have doubled the number of ways you can get in touch with me. I now have a Twitter account. So if you want to get on the Twitter and tell, welcome me to 2005, I would appreciate it. Uh, I like, like apparently talking to people now. It's weird. Uh, and today, we are here to talk about indexes. And this session is going to be a little bit different from other indexing sessions that you may have been to or may end up, in, at, at, may end up at in your career, because we're not going to talk about this once. Because for Christ's sakes, it's 2019, and I want this talk to age well. Uh, we're also not going to talk about these things. And we're not going to talk about these things. It's not that they're bad things to know about. It's just that they've never really helped me practically solve a problem. They're just not. They're good things to have back here, but not good things to have up here. I'm also not going to argue about dumb index advice. If your clustered index is on a GUID, I'm going to find that far less offensive than the fact that when I italicized GUID, the D started touching the question mark. If you have a new font, I'm open to change. Uh, if you don't rebuild indexes every night, it's cool. I will high five you. I think that's smart. If you don't always put the most selective column first in your index, that's OK, too. Sometimes that's a good idea. If you have page splits, that's awesome. That means you have customers. I need some page splits, so call me. If your index names aren't like perfect camel case, these are all my columns, I don't mind, because at least you're trying. You got something in there. Someone was like, yeah, we're going to make an index. We're going to try to fix something. What I do care about is making index tuning part of query tuning. There have been so many times when I've gone and talked to people, and they're like, the query's slow, we got to rewrite it, giving no thought to the indexes behind it. Or I'll hear people say, oh, some operation is slow, like doing joins are slow, or group by is slow, or order by is slow. And the only time people care what their indexes do is when it's a scan instead of a seek. They're like, ah, we got an index scan. This query was just doomed from the get-go. It was like the Titanic. Just done, right? Just never be fast. What I'm going to show you today are some obvious and some not so obvious things that indexes can fix in query plans. I'm also going to show you some other stuff. Indexes can also help with blocking. Because when you are modifying a bunch of rows, the way to make it easy is to make it really easy to find those rows. You may still need to batch modifications or limit the number of indexes you have, but the, but the index to help the queries find the rows that it needs to update, it's a really good one, really good thing to have around. So with that, let's stop looking at PowerPoint like we're in 1985 and get into some demos. I'm going to close that because I just don't care anymore. Uh, if you want to download the demo database presentation, any of that stuff, uh, the link's there. Also, I'll put a slide up at the end, too, so you can see that. And uh, all right, pictures. Everyone's taking a picture of that. I, no one ever takes pictures. Find a, find a love that looks at you, the way you people take pictures of free downloads. <laughs> All right, so let's see. Let's get those query plans turned on, and let's, let's jump right into some nonsense. The first thing we're going to talk about is index spools. These things are the absolute worst. Now, I'm going to show you something crazy. I have a query here that's getting the top 38, right? Top 38, everyone can see that. Top 38's fine. I'm trying to make Paul White happy by putting parentheses around my top. He always makes fun of me for that, so here we go. Oh, I think I should highlight the whole query, too. That's a good idea. Professional presenters away. All right, so I'm going to run this, and this is fast. This finishes in just about a second, and we don't have any problems. I, I, the plan isn't important. I just want you to get a, get a feel for the shape of it. We have a couple scans and a couple sorts, right? That's cool. Watch what happens when we turn this to 39. All of a sudden, things get a lot different. 
And look what happens in the query plane. We now have this thing. Look at this. It's terrible. We have an eager index spool. I'm going to show you why this is bad. When we this see th see that oh God Almighty see this uh, cluster index scan over there. The query plan is telling us that it's running in parallel, but it's not. It's lying to. We're being lied to by this clustered index scan. If we head into the properties and we look at the rows, all those rows end up on a single thread. Thread number two got picked to do the work. That happens every single time. Index pools build on one thread serially. Dump all those rows into TempDB. Every time that spool builds, goes to TempDB, See, it sort of just throws it right away afterwards. So you could have just gigantic indexes getting built in TempDB constantly, and SQL Server's not telling you, really telling you much about it. We don't even have a missing index request here. There's no green text up at top saying, hey, I'm creating an index every time. You might want to try to do something. No. SQL Server's just like, hey, screw it. I'm going to do it. I don't trust you. You're going you're to give the index a dumb name. You're not gonna, it's not going not to be right. So SQL Server does this, and then what happens Let's see. Uh, oh, yeah, the time stats. There we go. This is a really cool new thing in, uh, in execution plans. We can see where SQL Server spends the majority of the time in an operator. So here we can see that we spend the CPU time and the elapsed time. They're almost equal, which means you can, that's how you can tell that it was serial. When things go parallel, you use more CPU time to do less elapsed time. So we can tell that that happens serially. And we can see that that's where the majority of the time that we spent in this execution plan was. Just about three seconds of that time was just in this operator. And of course, the way to fix it is to just look at the damn spool, right? So if we look at what the spool is doing, we can get a pretty good idea of how to fix things. We have some seek predicates, and we have some outputs. Those seek predicates are the things that SQL Server made the key of the index on. And those outputs were just the other columns that were hanging about. So when you make an index to fix that, you take the seek predicates, you make that put those in the key of your index, you take the outputs and you put them in the include of your index, and you're done. That's it. That's all you have to do to fix these monsters. And they are truly, truly monsters. So let's just create that index and let's see how it goes. I think, I think you'll all find it's much snappier when, it, when that happens. So here we have our top 39 query again. And we run that, and that's instant. No seconds, no nothing. Pretty good, right? All right, index spools, the worst. If you find them, kill them. Any questions on index spools? Not you. <laughs> Not you. Keep those hands down. That lower. I don't want to see. There you go. Put, put them in his back pockets. His back pockets. Yeah. Yeah, no, get them in there. All right. Uh, no questions on those. All right, we'll move on to my, my second least favorite spool, the table spool. This thing is also garbage, absolute hot garbage. Uh, so let's create a couple indexes to help our query out. And what we're going to do is uh, we're going to stick a bunch of rows into a temp table. And then we're going to query the temp table. And we're going to watch this thing run for a darn long time. Five, six, seven, eight. There's a lot of walking around you could do while this query runs. It's awful. Yeah, it just keeps going. Keeps going and going. 40,000 rows, 13 seconds. Not a good row to second ratio on that. Very, very poor. I don't like that, neither should you. If we look over in the execution plan, we can see just how bad this table spool ended up being. We'll head over into the properties, and we'll look at a few things. We have about, where is it? Execution. There we go. About 243,000 executions. So this operator executed 243,000 times. Of those, we had 40,000. Oh, wrong button. Hey, all sorts of wrong buttons. Everyone get in the mix. Of those, we have 40,000 rebinds. So that was times when SQL Server went and got new data to put in the spool, and 200,000 rewinds, which means it reused data in the spool. What's really, really crazy is that we ended up spooling 103 million rows through that spool. You know how many rows are in that table? Not that many. Not, no, far from that many. Far, far, far from that many. There are only about 3.7 million rows in that table. We also get about a 20 meg memory grant on that query. 
Watch what happens when we make one tiny little change. What we're going to do is stick a clustered index on that temp table, and we're only going to stick distinct user IDs in that temp table. So I'll run that. That was still quick, right? That's, that was still fast. And now look what happens when we run this query. Oop, should highlight that whole thing. Again, professional presenting 101. Highlight the whole query, run it. Look at that, done. That spool was the pits. You see that thing? You see those things? Beat them up. They're there for weird reasons. When SQL Server thinks that it has to do a bunch of repetitive work, it's going to take data, it's going to spool it, and it's going to say, well, if I'm going to have to do this a whole bunch of times, I might as well have it ready. So it takes that data, sticks it in a spool, reads it a bunch of times, and quite often I find that uh, those spools show up because uh, when the, algorithm, the costing algorithms were written for this, it was like the late 90s. There was like Atlantis Moore set CDs and all their computers. It was awful time. And, uh, uh, I.O. was a big, big problem. So when you, SQL Server had to do I.O., it wanted to do as little of it as possible. Now, when we have nice, fast disks, we have SSDs and NVMe, and we have tons and tons of RAM, these things are far less useful. They just have, like a lot more work within the query. Any questions on those? Yes, no, maybe? In, in between, in the middle, no? Again, not you. Those hands are up way too high, down, away. From, away. You're making me nervous. You, you're, you're, you're making me nervous. You're making me nervous, Hugo. I see the look on your face. Ugh. All right. So the other thing that indexes can help with is blocking. Everyone runs into blocking at some point. Concurrency, databases, things have to go, go in the database. Things have to get out of the database. What happens? Bunch of blocking. Now we got these guys. Are you here to escort me out? You, you look like security. You're, you're making me nervous now, too. All right. I'll smile for you. Not you. <laughs> yeah, I have that effect on technology. Yeah, good. Thanks. All right. Get out now. <laughs> All right. So, uh, brief interlude. All right. So, the other thing that indexes can help with is queries getting blocked. Now, this is fun because I'm. There's a 50-50 chance I'm going to forget to highlight begin trans. So if I don't, yell real loud. All right, we can go. So if I run this query, and I update some rows, and I look over here in, at SP who is active. Hi, Adam. How are you doing? Uh, I can see what locks this query takes. You can see that uh, I've got some object lock. I've got an object lock, and I've got some page locks. Yeah, so we've locked some things. That was fun. It was fun with that fun that time we did it. Uh, and then if I look over at the query plan for the blocking query, or for the sorry for the update query, uh, we can see that it looked at the clustered index, did a compute scale R, and then updated the clustered index. Not bad. Yeah, pretty simple. Nothing too crazy happened. If I run this top query. Up here, oh, I should, yeah. oh, right database and everything. I'm gonna have a stellar day. If I run this query, it finishes immediately. We're looking for the ID. That's good. We found it. Good job, us. If I run this query, we are less lucky. This query will not finish. This query is blocked. Nothing can go on up there. If we look back at SP who is active, hi Adam, and see what happens. Now we have some blocking. We have some lock weights. And we have a blocking session over here. We have session 51. Ah, there it is. Look at that. I'm a blocking session ID. I'm holding up all the works here. This is a very unhappy situation for that query. He's just going to hang out forever, doing nothing, being useless. We can, help we can help fix this situation by helping SQL Server find the data that it needs to update better. So let's go create an index that does that. Let's roll this thing back. All right. Yeah, good practice here. Good practice for rolling back queries. Let's make sure that's stuck. Good job. All right. So we're just going to create a very simple index on this date column. This date column is, going, is what we're looking for in the update query. We're looking for this range of dates right here. So we'll create an index on date. Bing, bang, boom. That was quick, nice and quick. Watch what happens now. We're going to rerun this update. All right, begin train. Good job. Good job, me, getting that done. All right, and now let's run this. And let's see what kind of locks we have now. We're going to have slightly different locks. Now we have some key locks involved. We don't just have that 
object and page stuff. Now we're just locking some keys. And that's, that sounds a little bit easier to me. Just locking some, just some key values rather than entire pages or entire objects. We're just, just locking a few IDs. No big deal. And now when we run our queries to look for, to find our magical IDs, these can both finish immediately. Boom, done. You know why? Because SQL Server didn't have to lock more than it had to to find the data it needed to update. Pretty, pretty spiffy, right? What do you think, Brian? You, know, you gave me crap about not shaving. Brian May never had that much on his face. I, I don't know. You, you, you're not funny. You ain't funny anymore, Andy. All right, any questions on how we helped get blocking out of the picture? Someone remind me to hit rollback, because otherwise the rest, of this, the rest of this session goes terribly. I did that like three times when I was practicing. I didn't hit rollback on that final one, and it's when everything went off the rails. That was embarrassing in front of everyone, right? All right. No, no, no. Everything else is normal. So with an index on that date column, SQL Server found the date it needed to update, helped that out. We didn't have to lock a bunch of crap. Good stuff. The other thing that indexes can help support are sorts. The reason that we care about sorts is because they're internally blocking. When you see a sort operator, that means all the rows had to show up there first, and then the sort could run and, and sort the rows into the order that you asked for. We had to physically sort. SQL, SQL Server, is Pinal in here? No? All right. Yeah, he, he's probably drunk from last night. Uh, Pinal lo loves it when I say this. SQL Server had to break out his tiny little baby hands and physically sort all of those rows up in memory. That's no fun. When sorts run, they, they, they need memory to, to store the data that they're going to sort in, and they may spill if they don't get enough. And the reason that uh, I first started hating sorts was one day I was tuning a query, and I created an index for it. And I thought it was a pretty sweet index. And the query kind of looked like this. It was a little bit more complicated, I promise. I, I just don't tune <laughs> queries that look like that. But this is a, this is a very easy example of, of, of why I started to hate sorts. So I created this index on owner user ID, because I'm joining on it, and on score, because I'm ordering by it. And I had a very different opinion of what the execution plan should be than SQL Server ended up giving me. It was uh, actually the worst possible outcome for this query plan, where it stuck the post table on the outer side of the joint <laughs> and sorted the whole thing and spilled a bunch of pages out to disk and stuck that poor little user's table over there on the, on the inside. Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't happy with that. And that's, that was the first time that I learned to hate sorts. The reason why I didn't like it is because it was after a plan that was shaped a little bit more like this, where I would have my join right there with the smaller table on the outside, and I would have my sort after I had joined some stuff together and figured some things out. This is, a much, this is the plan shape I wanted. I got the other one. So this is when I learned to love cross-apply. Thank you. That was your, you. You had a lot to do with that one. That's Itzik, if anyone wasn't sure. Don't get them confused with Hugo. They have very different haircuts. So what happened? We had uh, 24 megs of RAM to do that sort. We spilled a bunch of stuff out. Users table was in the wrong place. We only had uh, 1,000 rows, and it was just a much better query for that. Uh, the reason why I thought I would get that plan because of the index that I created is because when you have an uh, index with multiple key columns in it, you can sort by those key columns as long as you have an equality predicate on the column before it. And I'll show you exactly how that works. So when we, have, we create this index, it's got four columns in it, reputation, upvotes, downvotes, and creation date. Four columns in the key. If I run these two queries, this one doesn't have a where clause. We're just ordering by upvotes. This one down here does have a where clause. On reputation equals one, remember that's the first column in the index? We get two different query plans. I'm gonna run these guys, and look what we get. This plan sorts and spills. Yuck, gross, like boys. Uh, this plan, I get out of there, doesn't. We just have a little top in here. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? All right, you're the worst. <laughs> what a terrible wingman. I dress up like a gay icon. I can't get a, a top joke out of Andy Mallon. <laughs> what world do I live in? What world? <laughs> oh, yeah, he's English. He had a tiny bottom. That's why. All right, so let's see. Uh, the, and we can do that across all of the key columns in the index, too. If I, if I have equalities on reputation, upvotes, and downvotes, I can order by creation date. It's very easy. And this is the why I thought I would get a good plan out of the index that I created. 
See all those, all those columns? That's the way that they're stored in the index. Ordered by reputation, ordered by upvotes, ordered by downvotes, ordered by creation date. That's the way the index stores them. It orders things by all those columns. So when there's a repetitive set of values for something like reputation, and there's a repetitive set of values for something like upvotes, and that's just the way things are ordered. Creation date's the only one that's not very uh, duplicative up there. But at, this, but at the same time, that query plan doesn't have a sort in it. We just have a pleasant little index seek that everyone's happy with, and we have a little top. We have a little top. We have a little top, Andrew. Bye. <laughs> Doesn't like little top jokes, I guess. I don't know. I understand, sir. I understand. I'm sure it was a production emergency. I got lots of those. Uh, all right. So, uh, of course, that's a little bit less uh, useful when we have an inequality predicate, where if we run this query and we have this inequality on one rather than equality on one, less than equal to. I should have unhighlighted that first. I apologize. I'm a bad presenter. Uh, when we look at the execution plan, we are back to having to sort again. So what's the lesson here with these sorts and these indexes and the things that you can do with them? Well, a lot of the advice around uh, index tuning says, well, you should index your equality predicates first, right? Yeah. And then you should index your inequality predicates. Yeah? Good. And then you should include columns that you're just selecting. I think that's a little bit off. I think that's a little bit, little bit out of sorts for me. Get it? <laughs> All of you people. I think that maybe when you're tuning indexes and you find a big whop and sort in your plan, maybe the order that you tune things in should be index for equality predicates, then index for sorts, then index for inequality predicates. Because those inequality predicates always throw a big old monkey in the wrench. And sorts can cause a lot of trouble in plans. Anyone ever seen that? Sorts causing trouble? You, the handsome fellow down the, in the front, but not paying attention? Yeah, I see you. Yeah, come on. <laughs> are, you are you taking notes? Are you, are you drawing me? Oh, I would love it if you drew me. Come on. We'll, be, we'll talk later. I'll tip, I tip well. Uh, so the reason why sorts can cause big problems is because sorts can ask for a lot of memory. Hash joins and hash matches can also ask for memory, but boy howdy, sorts can ask for some memory. Now, I'm going to show you this query. First, I have to get rid of any indexes that might have been around because I hate those things. What good have they ever done me? So when I run this query by itself, this will ask for about a th uh, uh, 3.7 gig memory grant. And I'm going to show you what happens when I run a whole bunch of it. So I'm using a tool from Microsoft, right? Because I guess it's a Microsoft thing, uh, called OStress. And it's part of uh, RML Utilities, which you can download for free and you can beat the crap out of servers with. I like using it uh, in production to scare DBAs. Like all of a sudden just fire off a bunch of queries and say, huh, yeah, what's going on, buddy? Fix it. Yeah, what happened? What happened? Yeah, get on that. You got the email. Go for it. So uh, let's fire up OStress. Hope I don't have any porn in here. There we go. All right. So with six copies, is that six? No, nine. I had, I'm upside down dyslexic today. With nine copies of this query running, we have all of them running fine. Every single one of this query is able to run. It's able to get memory, it's able to run. They're all asking for and getting about 3.7 gigs of memory. Good job. I did math for once. I also dropped out of high school when I was 13. Uh, and we're not waiting on anything important. All CX packet weights, things you can ignore, right? What we have left is about 4.3 gigs of memory. That's how much more SQL Server has to dish out to queries that want to get a memory grant. So that means, anyone want to, let's take bets on this. If I run 10 copies of a query that wants a 3.7 gig memory grant, why did you do that to me? I'm getting stabbed in the back all over the place here, Andy. Yeah, you should be. You're, you're my guitarist. We should, we should have. Yeah, yeah, we'll do that next year. We'll do like a puppet thing. Like, air, we, we'll do air supply next year. <laughs> yeah, good luck finding that wig. Uh, so with nine copies running, they all run, they're all fine. I have 4.3 4 gigs of memory left to give another query. If I run 10 copies, am I gonna, is that query going to run? Is that going to happen? If you were my pre-con yesterday, you don't answer. Yeah, I see you. I see you out there. I see you out there. So I'm going to run 10 copies of this, and let's see what happens. 
How many people think it's going to run? How many people think it's not going to run? Don't all look at Hugo for an answer. That's messed up. I told you, hands down, in, in his pocket, in his pocket, now. All right, so let's run this, and let's go see what, what we end up with. God, a bunch of Judases in here. All right, so now we have 10 copies running, uh, sort of. Now he shows up. I already did the baby hands joke. Thanks, friend. Yeah. Go home. Get out. You're not welcome in here now. So now we have nine copies running and one not running, very visibly. Bunch of nulls stuck in there. That null grant time, that means we have nothing left. Yeah, I mean, we have no more memory to give this query. Even though it says 4.3 gigs down there and the query's only asking for 3.7, we're like, nah, can't do it. Can't afford it. Bummer, right? No good. No good. What's in that plan, causing a bunch of problems, let's actually kill this off before I fry my laptop. I live in constant fear of that now that I don't have a hardware budget. Uh, what's in that query that's causing a problem, and I'm only going to get the estimated plan here, so you're not going to get all the information, but we can make a reasonable assumption that it's that sort, asking for a whole mess of memory right here. You used to be pink. Why aren't you pink anymore? There we go. Golly. So we have this sort in the plan. We have that sort because we have that windowing function up in the query. And we're asking to get the row number partitioned by user ID and ordered by score descending. You can think of that as sort of like a group by and an order by smushed together in the query plan. And you can see that in the segment where we have a group by on user ID over there. Yeah, bummer. And we have the sort that was happening on user ID. Oh, hey, crayons for kids. Uh, on user ID and then score descending. So we sorted all our data by user ID and then score descending. And then in the next operator over in that segment, we group by user ID. So that's kind of what, that's that's what the windowing function is doing. And hey, does anyone in here know how to fix that? <laughs> may, did anyone in here maybe popularize a term for that kind of index? No, no. You, you, you can just throw that coffee at me and leave if you want. I, I would understand. I wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be upset. We can, it, and we can uh, create an index that helps support that. So we'll create an index on user ID, and then score descending, the partition by, and then the order by. And then we're, just because we can, because we're crazy DBAs, we're going to include all of the other columns that we're selecting in there. So we'll create this index. Yeah, go, go, go. Yeah, that was good. That was good on us. And then let's look at what the query plan looks like now. Runs pretty quickly now. It didn't run quickly before. It ran too quickly for me to fit in the 50-minute session. Where's the guy with the time card? Raise your hand. How, how am I doing on time? What? Loads? What's loads? C could you convert that into a freedom units for me? <laughs> how much? I have 60 left? Oh, you're brutal. How do we go back in time? So this query finishes, uh, blessedly, uh, and we no longer have a big old sort in there. Now we just have our segment and our sequence project. So we were able to create, we were able to get that, that, uh, that data a lot faster without having to ask for gobs and gobs of memory to do it. If you go look at what that query asked for for memory this time around, uh, let's go memory grant info. Drum roll, anyone? Drum roll, someone give me a drum roll. You're a guitarist, you can't do it. Stink bomb. Get out. Zero. We didn't need any memory anymore. So we could run like almost unlimited copies of this query. Almost. Almost unlimited. There's this other thing that's also a finite resource on SQL Server, in SQL Server, somewhere thereabouts. Most servers have this problem. Uh, and it's called threads. And you can run out of threads too. Yeah. I'm going to show you what happens when you run out of threads. So I have, a sort of, I have a query that's written in a very specific way. I have a very specific set of queries. Is that joke still funny? A specific set of something joke? Yeah? No? Maybe? All right. What? No, probably not. Probably not. So I have this query written in a way to get a lot of parallel stuff going. And this query will ask for and get ba -ba -bum, 12 threads. 
I had my, 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 my server over here is set to max.4, and I have three parallel branches in that query that can be active at the same time. So SQL Server is like, I want four times three equals 12 threads. See that three branches? Max.4, my math is right on that. I know I'm a high school dropout, but someone, someone just say yes or no on, yeah, four times three, 12. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Brian. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, tell me, tell me more about space. I like space. Space is where I'm gonna go when I'm done with this. Uh, so w let's just beat the crap out of this server. Uh, I have, this, is, this, this, this calculation is published in Microsoft's documentation, I'm not on crack. Uh, when I run this, I can figure out how many threads my SQL Server has to give out for queries. It's 576 on my laptop. That's pretty good for a laptop. That's not very good for a production server, I'm gonna be honest. But if I just beat the tar out of this server, right now I'm gonna take, I forget how many, how many copies of this, and 96, I'm gonna run 96 copies of this just to exacerbate the situation and hopefully not fry the motherboard. I need an air horn for this thing. I love that. It's my, I know I should have. They, they, they let people on planes with those, right? <laughs> Pilot, <laughs> stewardess. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna beat the crap out of my laptop. No whammies, no whammies. And now we're gonna rerun this so we can get some information about what's happening. And this is gonna be a little bit slower than it was before. You might feel some sluggishness. And let's see, oh, we got it. And now we have thread pool. See that down there? That's, 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 that's bad news, that thread pool. We have sessions that are null, session IDs that are null. They can't get a thread to even get a session ID to start running. We've given away all our threads. Queries are sitting around waiting on threads now. That's a bummer. This is a very, very bad thing to happen to a query. Uh, the thing that really stinks is that these things won't even show up in most of your happy F5 monitoring scripts because the join between sessions and requests is usually on session ID. And most people don't put a left join there. They put that, in, they put that regular join. It doesn't, you don't get the nulls back then. So you, end, you, can't, you don't really even catch this when it happens. But this is queries just sitting around waiting on a thread to do anything. You can probably guess, well, let's kill that first, holy cow. <laughs> Stop, 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 damn you. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is smoking over here. Uh, so you can probably guess, if we create some indexes, we might get a slightly better query plan. That's what we've been getting a lot of, slightly better query plans. If we create some indexes, we might even make this query so cheap to run that it doesn't need 12 threads, it just needs one thread. What do you think? Yeah, you might be able to do that? Maybe, yeah. Let's find out. Let's find out. Oh, go away. There was not a SQL prompt advertisement, I promise. That's the most annoying thing that happens. All right, let's run that. Oh, look at that, serial plan. We made this thing so cheap to run, the optimizer was like, ah, hey, you don't need all those threads, pal. You don't need it. You can, just, you can just run single threaded, everything will be fine. Now we can run 576 copies of this thing, because we have 576 threads to give out. Yeah, good job, right? Good job, us, we are professional. Data professionals, yeah, I think that's good. Anyway, that's thankfully the end of the demos. Now nothing can go wrong, right? Maybe, no? You, you, you look unsure now. Anyway, uh, how am I doing on time? Don't say loads again. 15, beautiful. Anyway, thank you for coming. Uh, the, what I wanted to go for here is with the right indexes, uh, you can fix all sorts of problems in your queries. Good indexes can help your code scale much, much beyond what you think it can. Like whatever hardware you have, you can usually scale your code inside that hardware with a good set of indexes. Good indexes can also help you make better use of hardware because when you add the right indexes, you stop asking for all that memory. When you add the right indexes, you stop asking for a gazillion threads and you can make better use of the server hardware that you have. If you still have questions, if you want to give me some page splits, if you want to hang out and talk, if you want to ask me where I got my outfit from, anything like that, that's how you can get in touch with me. If you want to download the slides for this and the demos and all the other stuff, you can go to that bit.ly link. It's case sensitive, just remember that. These bit.ly links are very, very case sensitive. And uh, that's it, thank you. <laughs>